complaint of Kara Mann says one night this past summer, a man was on a high speed chase with the police and he drove through her yard and crashed into her camper. Kara gave a description of this man to the police and she believes it was the defendant because it was his car. So she's suing. Defendant John Pusa says on the night in question, he had been drinking and left his car at a bar. And at some point in the night, his car was stolen. John says he didn't do it, and he's a victim too. Tell me what happened here. First of all, I'd like to say that I have never met the man. I don't know him. Um, last time I seen this person in his car was running across my front yard from the police. Your Honor, he was running from the police in whose car? From his car, where he had been on a chase with the police okay. and went through my neighbor's backyard, missed the pool, missed the deck. Wow. Somehow swung his car around and hit the side of our fifth wheel camper. Did the police catch him? No. He, he got away? He proceeded to not only hit it and then he left. He tried to leave and he ended up at our driveway where they blocked him off. The police? The police. Well, they did catch him. No, he got out and ran. <laughs> Your Honor, it clearly wasn't me. And the police couldn't catch him? <laughs> Correct. He outran the police. No, Whoever Honor, was in the car that hit my camper outran the police. What do you mean whoever? I assume. It wasn't him? Yeah, I've never seen it before. So I seen a man running. It fits his build. I am short. It was a taller man running in my front yard. When we woke up to sirens at 2.14 in the morning, and I ran to the door because I didn't know if it was a fire or what. Then I seen a man of his built running across what my backyard. What damage? He totaled our fifth wheel camper. Mm. And I have pictures. It's terrible. Let's see it. Your Honor, Sir, let me I hear from you. Pictures. Give me the background. Oh, Your Honor, uh, on July 13th that evening, I went out with a couple of friends of mine and we were out bar hopping. You know, I don't drink all the time and stuff, but when I do, I get really messed up. And I was out partying with a couple of friends of mine and uh, I had to call for a ride home because I was drunk that night and my uh, roommate here came and picked me up and he gave me a ride home at 310. So that guy outran the cops too? Yeah, that's right. He was, <laughs> both of you in great shape. <laughs> yeah. He outran the police also. So go ahead. You're saying he came to pick you up three yes, times Honor. because you didn't want to drive drunk, obviously. Right. Thank goodness. I've had to do two DUIs in my life and I won't get a third. And you got in his car or your car? In his car. And you left yours at the bar? Correct, sir. All right. So what else you want me to know? Well, I had the keys in the console there. So what and are you suggesting? Someone stole it? And oh, yes, sir. Family? I have paperwork almost verifying that fact. Almost verifying it. Well, <laughs> they, uh, they found somebody's wallet in the car with a picture ID that yeah. isn't me. Did you me, know this? Let's see it. That isn't me. I had to call for a ride home because I was drunk that night and my uh, roommate here came and picked me up and he gave me a ride home at 310. So that guy outran the cops too? Yeah, that's right. He was, <laughs> both of you in great shape. <laughs> yeah. Plaintiff Kara Manns insists the defendant drove through her yard and damaged her property while on a high-speed chase with the police. Did you know they found the wallet of someone else who, because you were tentative about knowing whether it was him. The police officer told us it's a small community and we know the officer well there and he's the one that told me to bring this to court but anyhow he informed us that it was his wallet that they found the keys was in the ignition your honor the, the, and if even they t the tow truck driver drove the car up on the tow truck okay he admits that he left his keys in the console and why would you do that sir who leaves uh, i just did, i wouldn't want to lose them or leave them on the bar because i have lost my i have lost my keys in the past so I just leave him in the car. It's a report, small town. Let me see. I turned into East Lincoln Street from Indiana. I then observed a white male subject appearing to be in his 30s. I said, I observed someone in their 30s. Thank you. It Wayne. was 2.14 <laughs> in the morning. Okay. The police say when the vehicle keys, which were still in the ignition with the vehicle running, they found a wallet with an Indiana ID card inside bearing the name of, it's not him, I'm not going to mention the person's name, has a 1978 birth date and 
the computer check of that person revealed that he is wanted by the Lake County Sheriff for several charges. He has multiple prior contacts with the police that match the description. The police believe it was someone else. Did you talk with the police? Yes, I did. And did you the reason why I am suing this man is because his vehicle hit our okay. property. Okay. Now, I am like I said, I've never met the man. I've never even seen him before. I wouldn't know him on the street. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Other Your Honor, than, I wasn't in possession of my vehicle. All right, sir. You, and and maybe you have to teach me the law. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All I know is what had happened and that his car registered to John mm-hmm. Puza, wrecked yeah. into our fifth wall camper. He did not report that car stolen till the following afternoon at three o'clock. Now, mm-hmm. I, I don't drink, and I don't know how long it takes you to be coherent in the morning after you're out all night drinking, but I would think that you would know that your car was stolen before. Then you said it happened at 2 a.m.? 2.14 a.m. on July 14th. And he he that, reported it stolen at 3 the afternoon, right, in the he, following afternoon. Ma'am, the reason he didn't report it stolen based on his testimony is that when he left, it was still there. He had his friend come and pick him up. He left his car because he was too drunk to drive the car. So while his friend is taking him home, someone comes and steals the car. And that's what the police believe. The police believe it's the person whose wallet they found in the car who has a criminal history. They saw the person and they say what they saw was a white male who appeared to be in his 30s, six feet to six feet two. And indeed, the driver's license indicated that a white male, age 33, six feet. Your Honor, may I show you some pictures, please? All right. I, I would like to know how the damage from this vehicle could total a fifth wheel trailer. Oh, it can. This is your car? Yes, sir. Look, I mean, that, that's, that's the pictures of the car taken yesterday. I gave him the pictures of the car also. What you did or what whoever was driving your car did was bent the axle and he hit right okay. above the wheel. Well, unfortunately, ma'am, the law is that even if it was his car, he can't be held liable. He's a victim. He's the victim. Someone stole his car and that's the person that's liable. For example, if someone kicks in your door and robs you and they take money that belongs to your friend. Okay. Who do you think should be responsible for that money? The one that took it, but... It was still in my possession. I mean, I'm not saying. So you think you should be? I did not no, no, realize no, no. that he wasn't driving. No, ma'am. Let's stay with this analogy. I know what you're you saying. Because you just said the guy that took it. Or so girl. why is it going to be different here? But if it's all but what if, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I didn't go out drinking that night. I was asleep in my home. I was safe in my home. So I thought okay. this car comes barreling through a backyard. Plaintiff Kara Manns insists the defendant drove through her yard and damaged her property while on a high speed chase with the police. The good news is you have insurance. Um, well, that's the true. bad news Thank is that you have to catch up with this other guy and they have his name. That's the other part of good news now is he well, incar- see, do they have him incarcerated last time i talked to the new chicago police department mm-hmm. they did not and they did not have he him. has a warrant and he's on the run still because once again you know this man can't outrun no well, police i didn't know <laughs> if he can outrun those police those police don't belong on the force <laughs> well <laughs> okay they need to do just what my chief of security here at the show does fletch <laughs> Sit right in this audience and talk to people and tell the young ones what to do. <laughs> no offense, Fletch. You're all right with me. But you know these young boys, I outrun you too. Uh, <laughs> ma'am, I'm going to have to dismiss your claim because the law is you can't hold someone liable if they are also a victim. So we have to find the perpetrator. So 
Good luck to you. You know who he is. That's the good news. And if you need help finding, we'll send Fletch. <laughs> and he'll go about as fast as he'll <laughs> have a good day. Well, we're still going to have to be neighbors and uh, find the guys. So the hopefully, I hope to find the guys that stole the car and they should be held responsible. And hopefully he'll go after him, too, for the damage on his car. I was trying to but do. he ought to learn a lesson, too, not to leave the car, the keys in the ignition. Yes, I have.